What's up, Geometry? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 5.3, Proving Triangle Congruence by something called Side Angle Side Congruence Theorem. So we're going to figure out why is it called Side Angle Side and be able to solve real life problems. First thing we want to talk about is what is the Side Angle Side or the SAS Congruence Theorem actually means. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of the second triangle, then the two triangles are are congruent. So side angle side just means if you start on a side and it's including the correct angle with another side, you can see that this is side angle side. And then this side matches with DF matches with CA and then DE matches with AB. Again, you see the angle in here. So side angle side. Okay. So what we're going to do is try to write a proof of proving that triangle ABC is congruent to side CDA. We're going to start with our givens, so you want to go ahead and set up your statements and reasonings, and let's start with writing down our given statement. Okay, so all I've listed here first is the given statements that BC is congruent to DA, and then BC is also parallel to AD. The next thing we want to look at is we want to try to prove that these triangles are matching, and we probably want to use reasons to help understand side angles and sides. So. We already know that the two given sides are congruent. What I want to maybe focus on are maybe these two angles right here. Okay, so I'm going to say because these are parallel, then I can use the alternate interior angles um, congruent theorem. And that just states that I can use angle D A C is congruent to angle B, C, A, okay? And I notated that with purple. Now, I'm gonna try another statement where can I also get another side to be matching? If you notice, C and A are connecting, and if you look at triangle ABC and triangle CDA, they both share this common side right here. And because they're sharing it, that means that's also congruent. So I'm going to put side CA is congruent to AC. And the, re the property that we can maybe say here is the reflexive property. So to conclude, I have now shown that I have a matching side, another matching angle, and another matching side, side, angle, side. So I'm gonna say now that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA using the side, angle, side congruence theorem. Okay, let's try another one. In this diagram, QS and RP pass through the center M of the circle. What can you conclude about MRS triangle and MPQ? So one thing I might look at here is right away I'm going to see some vertical angles. Okay, so I can maybe say that angle QMP and is equal to um, angle SMR. Okay, um, and I know that because they're vertical. I can also say that because M is the passing through the center of the circle, that also could be the midpoint. So I can maybe say that side RM is congruent to MP and QM is congruent to uh, QMS. And because they're both passing through the center, that means all of these sides are gonna be matching together. Um, that center is separating the lines evenly. So I can say triangle SMR is congruent to triangle PMQ using the side angle side system. There, there are two sides kind of sandwiching that angle. That's how I can say it's side angle side. Okay, 
Let's go into the back of our notes and look at this real life question. You're making a canvas sign to hang on the triangular portion of the barn wall shown in a picture. Um, yours didn't print off in color, but one thing I did want to point out to you, these are matching right here. And then this one is a little bit different. Okay, this is shown in your book for lesson 5.3. So I'm double checking and flipping back to 5.3, but that picture is there. Um, so it's a little bit nicer to see in that case, okay? You think you can use two identical triangular sheets of canvas. You know that RP is perpendicular to QS and PQ is equal to PS. Use the side angle sign congruence theorem to show that PQR is equivalent to PSR or congruent. So I know that I'm given PQ is congruent to PS. Cool, that's one side. Then I can say angle RPS is also congruent to angle RPQ because of a few reasons. You can say um, perpendicular lines, so create 90 degree angles. You can say linear pair definition, or you can also say supplementary angles definition. Okay, um, because of that, then you also can say that line RP, because this is a 90 degree angle, one of those is also going to be, you're gonna have one lone side and two, sing, and two matching sides. So really this RP is also going to be matching PR and that is using the reflexive property. So now you can say triangle PQR is congruent to triangle PSR using the side angle side congruence theorem. Okay, last one says, construct a triangle that is congruent to triangle ABC using the side angle side congruence theorem. So you want to use a triangle that is congruent to ABC. So maybe we can say that we name our other triangle, not drawn to scale, DEF. And I would just wanna make sure that I include a side, an angle, and a matching side. So like DE can match AB, angle D can match angle A, and DF can match AC. We'll say that, okay? So that just means you wanna make sure that you have a side, an angle, and then another side that matches the corresponding parts of the other triangle. 